Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Healthy diets rich in antioxidants and vitamins are thought to be beneficial to the heart. But which nutrients in particular are helpful and how much do they help is not well known. This question was recently examined by a team who wrote it up in this paper. Micronutrient supplementation to reduce cardiovascular risk. The full paper is behind a paywall, but they do have a nice summary chart attached to the abstract. As mentioned, the influence of a diet rich in micronutrients on CVD risk has not been quantified. So in this study, they aim to provide a comprehensive, up-to-date, evidence-based map of nutrients and the CVD outcomes, which they did through a review of randomized controlled intervention clinical trials. They found 884 relevant trials evaluating 27 micronutrients across more than 880,000 participants, so a good-sized data set. In summary, omega-3 and 6 fatty acids, arginine, citrulline, folic acid, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, alpha-lipoic acid, CoQ10, melatonin, catechin, curcumin, flavanol, genistein, and quercetin showed moderate or good evidence for reducing CVD risk. For specific outcomes, I put the relative risk numbers into a table as they're easier to see. As a reminder, relative risk is the chance of something happening with the intervention divided by the chance of it happening without the intervention. So a relative risk of one means that there's no difference. Less than one means that there's less chance of it happening. And more than one means that there's more chance. Here we can see that omega-3 fatty acid had a relative risk for CVT mortality of 0.93, which means it reduced the risk by 7%. Also, the risk of heart attack is reduced by 15%, and other heart disease events by 14%. The numbers for folic acid and CoQ10 are also shown. Vitamin C, D, and E, and selenium had no effect on CVD or type 2 diabetes. Beta-carotene increased CVD risk. As we can see, the risk ratios are greater than one. Beta-carotene is a chemical which gives carrots that orange color and is a precursor to vitamin A. Whether other precursors such as retinol to vitamin A would have the same effect is not covered in the paper. As they say, not all micronutrients are helpful and it highlights the importance of micronutrient diversity and the need to balance the benefits and risks. Here is the heat map that they have in the paper. Yellow arrows going down are for when a marker goes down and it's beneficial. A yellow arrow going up is for when a marker goes up and it's beneficial. For a red arrow going up, it is an increase in a detrimental marker and a circle is for unchanged. I found the color coding for the evidence levels somewhat non-intuitive. It goes from blue for high quality, green for moderate, black for low quality, to purple for very low. So the best is for a yellow arrow on a blue background. Across the top, we have various health markers grouped into sections, blood pressure, blood lipids, and blood glucose. And down the side, various micronutrients grouped by type. We can see that omega-3, folic acid, and CoQ10 do quite well. Just with a quick glance, shows curcumin also has five arrows going in the right direction. And one that I have not heard of before, genistein, has high quality evidence that it lowers blood pressure. Genistein is a polyphenol which is present in beans and is also a phytoestrogen, which can impact the effects of estrogen and may depress tissue growth and lower cancer. The heat map also has a table showing evidence for the impact of the micronutrients on clinical outcomes, which we looked at earlier. The results for omega-3, folic acid, and CoQ10, and for vitamin C, D, E, and selenium, where there is reasonable quality evidence that they do not help with CVD. And beta-carotene, increasing all-cause mortality, CVD mortality, and stroke, though I notice that the evidence for this is very low quality. The summary heat map is very helpful in seeing what the micronutrients has what effect. They are only outcomes related to cardiovascular disease and diabetes. So for example, because vitamin D does not show any effect, does not mean that it is not important for other things such as bone health and immune system support. Thank you for your attention. 
and I will speak to you again soon. Mm-hmm.